Navigating between New York City's airports and the city center can be very expensive. On average, it's about $100, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do it for as cheap as $2.90. Now, the process of getting from one of New York's three airports, it really doesn't matter which one you take, by the way, to the city center can be a variety of different methods of transportation, from helicopters to subways to ferries, and walking. Can I take a city bike? I would love to see you take a city bike with all your luggage, Lucas. Please do that and let me know how that goes. <laughs> but anyway, this is gonna be your go-to guide on how to navigate New York City's many transportation systems, whether you're coming from the airport to the city center or just getting around the city. So let's start. All right, I'm gonna give you some quick facts before we get into the airport guides. Number one, a great app to use is City Mapper. This will compare the cheapest, the best, the fastest routes. Download that and it's really, really useful if it's your first time in the city. I use it when I travel to different large cities, but as a local, I use Google Maps. So two options for apps. Number two, it doesn't matter which airport you fly into, just choose the one with the cheapest ticket because all three airports are pretty much more or less the same distance from Midtown. So you might as well just choose what gets you the cheapest flights. And number three, for simplicity purposes, when I'm showing you the airport routes, I'm mapping everything to the Midtown area. This is because that's the location that the majority of visitors stay in and I just felt it would be the easiest way to explain this. However, if you're staying in a different area, most of the routes are pretty much the same until the last moment, so you can still follow this guy. If you aren't on a budget, then the easiest way to get from any of the airports to the city center is taking a car service. This is gonna be way easier than carrying your heavy bags on trains, on subways, and all of that. Now, to do this, I recommend a few different apps. Uh, Revel has a really good promotion going on right now, so if you use this code right here, you will save 40% on your first two rides. You can also use Lyft. I have a promo code here to help you save money. Or Uber, of course. I don't have a promo code for Uber though, so maybe take one of these. <laughs> when you do a car service, an important detail that is unlike any other airport is you have to go to a ride app pickup location. So you gotta follow the signs that look like this and just follow those to where you can get in the car. You have to call the car to one of those locations. It's easy. It will direct you within the app. We're gonna pretend like I just got off the plane. I'm here at JFK's baggage area. JFK has several different terminals. This is terminal five. It doesn't matter which terminal you end up in because the process is going to be the same. So essentially, once you get your bags, you're gonna look for a sign that looks like this. This will give you all the information on how you can get from the airport to the city center. We have taxis, we have ride up, pickup, and we have transit to the city. So you're gonna follow the arrow this way. If you take the elevator up, you just hit skywalk and that will bring you right to the air train. Really, you just are following any symbol like this. I also really love how they have these signs now on the floor. So you can just follow those if you're doing a taxi or a ride share app. Let's talk about some etiquette for these lovely things. If you're gonna stand still, you're gonna stand on the right side, okay? But if you wanna walk, then you can go on the left side. So please, if you're tired from your trip, totally get it. Just stay on the right so that there's still a pathway for those on the left that are in a rush. And this is very relevant because New Yorkers are always in a rush. So once you get to the end of the hallway, you're gonna have a bunch of different ways you can go. If you need to take a taxi, you go straight forward. It's pretty obvious, you guys. You just look at the signs there. If you're gonna take the air train, which you're going to need to do if you're doing a Revel, an Uber, or a Lyft, or if you're taking public transport, then just go down the escalator here or take the elevator. We're here at the air train entrance. The air train, you don't have to pay to get on it. If you're coming from the airport, you pay when you leave the air train. A little weird, but I'll walk you through that too. Here's a map so you can understand kind of where you're going. If you're taking the subway, you're gonna take it to Jamaica. It's the red line. You also can see which trains are coming on the top of this. If you're taking Taking it to the ride app pickup location, you're gonna take that to terminal seven. Also, if you need more direct help, we got Wesley here to help you out. It may not be Wesley, but look for someone there. in the red vest. That says air train on it too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, it was pretty simple. How much is the air train, by the way? Uh, the air train is $8.25 per person. Yeah. And um, the trick is, um, say if you have a party of four, or you're a party of two and you're doing a round trip, uh -huh. definitely invest in the 10 trip for $25. So it's been $8.25 per person, you spend $25 for it four people or, you know. Wait, that's a really good tip. Where do you yeah. buy that? Uh, right at Jamaica Howard Beach Station. So you should buy it when you're leaving, like right before yeah. you scan out? Yeah, so if you're if you're coming into New York, uh -huh. and um, if you're a party of two and you know you're coming back, get the tincture for $25, because, you know, it's yeah, 8.25 times two is 16, yeah. 50, $33 overall. You spend 25. 
That's so good. I didn't even know about yeah. that. You're teaching me things. <laughs> if you're using a ride sharing app, you get off here at Terminal 7. This is right before Jamaica. And you follow the sign. When you get off the air train, that is when you're going to pay. You have to go through here. But before you go through here, you have to get a Metro card and put $8.25 per person on it or do the 10 ticket price that we talked about earlier. It's going to save you a lot of money. It's actually a shockingly good deal. Black bar facing to the right and you dip it. Lucas, you want to go first? We are out of the air train. There are two options now, and I recommend the Long Island Railroad option. Why? Because it's only about $2 more than the subway, and it's way faster. Direct to Penn Station. Gonna buy my ticket, gotta download the MTA app, train time. Now you're going to put Jamaica to Grand Central, and I'm going to pay and get the card. All right, so now we have our tickets and we're going to get on the train. You cannot activate the ticket until it is time to actually get on the train. Oh, look at that, here it is. And now is the time where you can activate your ticket. So now I'm going to hit activate ticket like this, and then the conductor will scan that. With the city ticket, you can use it any time of day except between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. and at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. And that's because those are rush hour time. And it will only be $2 more than the subway. Much nicer, much faster, air conditioned, way better experience. Overall, it's a win. So we just arrived to Penn Station. We are officially in Midtown Manhattan now. Once you get out of the train, you're gonna follow signs up to the exit where it says street subways, LIR, Amtrak, New York Transit. It doesn't really matter what it says as long as it says exit. So the train will drop you off at 33rd and 7th Ave. Now this is, you know, still Midtown, but a lot of people stay in Times Square. That's on 42nd Street, so that's nine blocks away. Now we're here at LaGuardia. We're here at Baggage Claim. LaGuardia Airport has three terminals. Doesn't matter which terminal you get off in, but what you're gonna do to get the cheapest way to the city. By the way, fun fact, LaGuardia is the cheapest way to get to the city. Only $2.90. Isn't that amazing? Now you're going to follow signs for the buses. Again, the Rideshare app has specific locations, so if you are calling an Uber, Lyft, or Revel, then you have to follow signs for that. And the signage is all very nicely laid out for you. The bus that we're going to be taking is the M60. This is an express bus. Some of the signs will show you buses to Subway, Q70, and M60, so that's the ones you're looking for. Regardless Regardless, if you don't see them specify the bus on the sign, still follow the signs that are pointing towards the buses. Once you go through those doors, you're going to be outside, and this is where all the buses will pick you up. There's signs on each of these pillars right here. So this one is M60 Q70. You can go to the select pillar that works for you, but the majority of the pillars have the same buses coming no matter what. You may be wondering, what's the difference between the Q70 and the M60? Well, let me explain with this lovely map here. The Q70, aka the LaGuardia Link, will take you to either this subway station, 74th Street and Broadway, or this subway station, Woodside, 61st Street. After that, you're going to have to take the subway multiple stops into Times Square. Where is this one, the M60, will take you to Astoria Boulevard, or it will bring you straight into Manhattan at 125th Street. It actually stops at all the 125th Street locations. So the M60 is going to be about 10 minutes faster than taking the LaGuardia Link if you were going to Midtown. The only difference is you will have to pay when you initially board the M60, whereas the LaGuardia Link is free. And then once you get on the subway, you're going to have to pay at that point. They are the same price in the end, $2.90 or $2.90. We're going to be paying with Omni. That is a contactless payment system. So if your credit card is able to do contactless payment or if you have Apple Pay or Google Pay on your phone, then you can use that. Or you can pay with uh, the bus ticketing system. I'll show you what that looks like. It's over here. So this is where you're going to buy your ticket to the M60 bus. The one thing I want to know is you're going to already need to have a Metro card if you want to do this method. I do recommend the contactless payment that will be way easier you can buy a metro card like this one right inside the airport near door 14 um, so essentially what we're going to do once you have your metro card is you're going to press this button here you're going to put the metro card in then it will print out a receipt this is the receipt that you will need to board the bus the bus driver is not actually going to check the receipt that is only if the mta police come on the bus and want to make sure you have a receipt. 
Uh, if you don't, it will be a $100 fine. All right, the M60 bus is here. So I'm getting my contactless payment out and all I'm gonna do is just go like that. So now we're on the bus. We're going to take this to Astoria Boulevard and from there I'll guide you. But I just wanna point out when you're riding a public bus in New York, um, the way you stop, um, well you request the stop, is there's gonna be this like yellow string, I guess you would call it. It's not like he's just gonna stop the bus anywhere if you pull this. It has to be at one of the stops on the route that the bus is already taking. So you would pull this and then, I'm not, I didn't actually pull it. And then it will have a uh, sign that goes up here that says stop requested. And then the bus will stop. We just got off of the bus at Astoria Boulevard. That is the Astoria Bo Boulevard subway station, not the Astoria Boulevard bus station that may be a bit confusing but just to clarify if you don't see this see what's behind me it's like a giant bridge with a train on it you don't get off the bus at the first Astoria Boulevard the bus stop is technically called Hoyt Avenue and 31st Street but essentially it's taking you to the Astoria Boulevard subway station and that's where we're going to catch the N or the W and you can take that right into Midtown Manhattan. This is where you can buy a Metro card. Later in this video, we do a complete overview of the subway system, telling you how to use it, how to read the maps, how to buy a Metro card. All of that will be right here at this timestamp. So if you are planning on using public transport, which I do recommend, definitely keep watching until this point in the video. It will help you a lot. But for now, we're just gonna use contactless payment with my smartphone. Okay. You gotta make sure that you get on the train on the right side. So one side of the stairs will say Manhattan and Brooklyn bound, and one side will say Ditmars Boulevard, Astoria. Make sure you get on the Manhattan bound side, otherwise you're going the opposite direction of what you wanna do. We're on the end train but you can take the W too. It doesn't matter. Whatever train comes first, as long as it's the N or the W, take it to Manhattan. So we are currently right here. We're gonna take it all the way down. And technically, I don't know where your hotel will be if you're staying in Midtown, but you could get off any of the stops depending on what is closest to your hotel. At that point, I would recommend looking at Google Maps and figuring out which stop is closest to your hotel. And that's it. LaGuardia is a very simple, cheap way of getting into Manhattan. Only $2.90 instead of almost $100 if you take a car service. I'm here at Newark. This airport has three terminals and there are two ways that you can get to the city from here using public transportation. The other one, of course, is taking a Uber, Lyft, or Revel. But we're gonna focus on the public transport, of course. The first way is gonna cost you $15.90. That's taking the air train to Newark Liberty Airport Station and then taking the subway the rest of the way. But for only a few dollars more at $21, you could take the Newark Airport shuttle. This is way easier, because essentially you just get on it here at Newark Airport, and then you get off in Times Square. You don't have to lug your luggage between trains. It's just a sit down and get off, and I love that. So let's go take it, I'm gonna show you the process. We're gonna take the elevator to level one. This is arrival, so it's essentially as if you just got off the plane. Here we go. This is also where you're gonna have to do the ride up pickup for Lyft and Uber and Revel, although they don't have that there. Once you step outside of level one, you'll see signs that will bring you to Newark Airport Express. So follow along. All you gotta do is walk out of level one and go to number 16, which is Newark Airport Express. Now there is a chance that in the future, this number could change. And in that case, just look at the signage or ask a police officer or someone that works here which station it is. There's a lot of different shuttle buses, so just make sure you read the signs carefully because there's Jersey Transit, there's shuttles to different hotels. Now you have to buy these Newark airport tickets in advance and you can get that right online. I'll put the website on screen and also link it below for your convenience. These buses run every 45 minutes, so that is something to consider when you're traveling. If you miss it, that's kind of inconvenient, but if it works with the timing, then it's much better. So I recommend just buying the tickets once you get here and you can go do that right online. It's just gonna be better that way, because in case you miss it, you don't want to wait 45 more minutes. It is 3.06 for me, so it looks like there is a 3.15 bus going from Terminal A, which is where we are, to 42nd Street, Port Authority. Perfect. It's going to take 50 minutes. 
nonstop. I love that. It's $18 per person. I mean, it's, it's a little bit more than expensive than taking the New Jersey Transit by like $3, but it's direct and you don't have to transfer and you don't have to move your luggage around. So if you're a single person traveling to the city, this is gonna be cheaper. If you are not a single person traveling to the city, probably gonna be easier taking a Revel or a Uber or a Lyft. I'm sweating, it's so hot. Okay, I just got my ticket. It looks like this, a QR code. So they're gonna scan that when I get on the bus. You can actually buy a round trip if you want. It might be easier if you plan on coming back to Newark on your way back and you wanna take the same bus. Just make sure you look at the schedule ahead of time to make sure it lines up with your flight. All right, it's here, yay. It's like an actual coach bus. We got lucky too, because the timing worked perfectly. I feel like if the timing doesn't work, then it kind of sucks. Fun fact, you can actually pay for this in cash. It's $21.50 oh, and make sure you have exact change because the driver will not be able to give you change. Okay, so if you want to do it in cash, you can totally do that. It might be easier than like buying it in the moment online. We're here in Times Square, technically right next to Port Authority, which is a bus terminal. It's a little sketchy in Port Authority, so don't spend a lot of time here. Grab your bags and look at this. Times Square is right here. So you can head straight to your hotel from here or catch the subway if you're going to another destination. But it's super easy. The whole trip was about 50 minutes. You go through the Lincoln Tunnel, you get on and you get off. That's not even a stop, that's like zero stops. Way better than taking New Jersey Transit and then the subway. And it's only like $3 more. I love it. Let's talk about the subway because this is by far the best way to get around Manhattan. I'm gonna give you an overview of what you need to know, the most important things and how to use the subway right now. The subway entrances look like this generally. Now you'll see this little ball at the top right here. If this ball is red, that means that you can't enter through this station. However, it is green right now, so we are good to go. In the front of the subway station, you'll see which trains come here. Most of them have multiple lines that go there. So in this case, we have the B, D, F, M, and 6 that come here. And the other thing to keep in mind is sometimes it will say uptown only or downtown only. So just make sure if it doesn't say that, then it will go both directions. But if it does say uptown only, you may have to cross the street and enter on the other side if you want to go downtown. You'll also notice that some stations have this little accessibility sign. Unfortunately, the subway stations in New York City are not very accessible. Only about 25% are, which is really a shame. They are working to improve this, but it is a slow process. So if you do have accessibility issues, such as you have trouble walking far distances, using stairs, or are using a wheelchair, then I do recommend using a car service, it's gonna be much easier for you. However, you can route things via the subway. When you use Google Maps to figure out where you're going, you, there's a little thing in there that says like accessible only or wheelchair accessible. Click that and then it will tell you which stations are accessible. However, to be honest, a lot of the time the elevators aren't working, so this isn't the most reliable method and I really recommend using a car service. And they also smell like pee if not clean. When you are using a car service, you can actually tap uh, the accessibility icon when you're calling the car and then an accessible car will come to you if you are uh, in a wheelchair. We're in the subway now, it smells just wonderful. You'll know what I mean when you get here. Unfortunately, we haven't mastered the art of cleaning here in New York, but hopefully someday that will happen. It's very loud here as well. You're always having trains coming and going like this one. Let's talk about how to buy a Metro card. But before I go through this process, I highly recommend you use contactless payment. So we just installed this whole system throughout the subway system, which makes it so much easier than buying a Metro card. So I don't encourage this. If you have a smartphone, or if you have a credit card that accepts contactless payments. So all you need to do is just tap your phone here and it will charge it and you can go right in. Way easier than going through the process of buying a Metro card. Need an accessible gate. They also have that here and in this situation you tap it like this and then the door will open automatically. The new price for a Metro card is $2.90 per swipe and if you use Omni, it's great because essentially if you're here for seven days, once you hit $34, using the contactless payment, all other rides are free, so it's really great. But if you don't have contactless payment, let me show you how to buy a MetroCard. Here we are, the MTA uh, subway buying system. Hit start, okay, hit your language. 
If you are here for a week at a time, instead of buying individual rides, I would just re recommend buying a unlimited pass. And in that case, just hit Metro card. And then you're gonna have, you have to buy a new card and that's a, a dollar fee on that. And then you choose unlimited ride. Do the seven day, that's gonna be $33. But you can see the prices here. Now, you don't need to do the bus pass unless you're doing really far trips on the bus because the Metro card will work on buses within Manhattan. And choose your payment method. And then you're just going to simply dip your card here, put in your zip code, and this is important. If you're international, when they ask for your zip code, just put all zeros, because I know that you don't have a zip code here. Not a problem. And then it will come out right here and it looks like that. Our subway system, although it's colorful, we call trains by their number or their letter, not their color. It hits all the boroughs and you can do free transfers be between trains, which is super helpful. Over here, you can see when the trains are coming. They run pretty much every five minutes, but it, it's slower in the evening. So now we're in the station. It's a pretty standard station. This is how they all look more or less. They're very dirty. They smell bad. When you get to the station it will say downtown or uptown so pay attention to that so this is a downtown train i want to go uptown so that means i have to follow these signs here say uptown go this way so just look at the signs they're going to be more helpful honestly than the announcements that the train conductors are making because you can barely they're like barely audible it's incredible that they haven't updated this system so this is how our trains look they're pretty much all more or less look like this they do have air conditioning which is nice most of them have air conditioning a fun fact though is Let's say it's rush hour. That normally is when people are going to work or leaving work. All the cars of the train are packed, except for one. Do you go in that car or not? The answer is don't go in that car. Most likely there is a reason why it is empty, probably because of a very bad smell. So just a heads up on that. The train conductor will be making announcements when they feel like it. They're not very reliable. So the best way to pay attention to when your stop is is it will have a map of what the stations are. Some newer trains actually tell you what station you're at, others don't. So I would recommend just making sure you're paying attention when you get to each station. And then you would just get off at that station. And that's everything you need to know about getting around New York City. And if you're visiting, check out this video next about unspoken rules that the locals abide by and the ones you don't want to break if you're visiting.